<laughs> Hello, folks. Welcome back to a brand new video on the Anna and JT and Charlie channel. Today, we are watching the top 10 British foods that confuse the rest of the world. All right. Yeah. I love food. Uh, yeah. I like food, but I get confused easy, so. You're also picky. Yeah. Maggie. But who knows? Maybe we'll find something on here that we can try. <laughs> Charlie just smacked Maggie in the face. What is it? Why, why are y'all doing this right Can't... Don't, we're trying, we're trying to do something here. Don't get back down. You lay down. All right. Now they're both going to be in the oh shot. Gosh. Sorry, the Anna, JT, Charlie, and Maggie channel. <laughs> Jesus. Don't be sniffing butts back here. Oh, <laughs> uh, somebody called uh, Charlie Fanny Schmeller. Oh. Somebody said, so you got a Fanny Schmeller on the back of the couch. If y'all watched, I think it was the last or two videos ago. It was fun. We're about to get into it. Go to this channel. Hit the subscribe button. Drop a like for more reactions like this for more of this, I guess. Scratch my face again. I'm not supposed to do that. If I had a face like that, I'd scratch it too. Let's get into it. These dishes really do give food for thought. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 British foods that confuse the rest of the world. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at British foods that baffle Ew. foreign visitors, either because their names are misleading or because their okay, ingredients are so good. unusual, it's a wonder anyone would choose to eat them. Is that Number a potato? 10, scotch I don't know, eggs. Looks like a pear. I don't think I should have eaten that scotch egg. Is that that egg with the sausage wrapped around it? Never mind, not important. This popular British snack consists what? of a hard boiled egg enclosed in sausage meat and breadcrumbs. London's Fortnum and Mason department store supposedly invented them in 1738, although other sources claim they originated in Yorkshire. The earliest recipe for scotch eggs, at least in print, dates back to 1809, which recommended they be served hot with gravy, though they can equally- I feel like our dads would like those. Yeah. That's something like a dad would like. Yeah. Uh, not not me. I don't like eggs. So. I'd eat it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, at first I was kind of confused. I was like, how are you going to get scotch. a sausage around an egg? Oh. But. <laughs> I was stuck on the fact that I thought there was scotch in the egg. Oh, like the liquor? Yeah. The core? Yeah. Nah, that'd no. probably make it better though. Food <laughs> is called as a picnic food. The taste of scotch eggs can vary depending on where you eat them as well, with different UK regions using their own local sausages in the dish. Michael, would you like a miniature scotch egg? Oh, not for me, pet. I've got myself a steak and kidney pie. Number nine, deep. Maybe you eat them while you're drinking scotch. Oh. That might make sense. You sit down for a little glass of scotch, a couple eggs with sausage on them. Sounds like a... Sounds like I would throw up. Yeah, sounds like I'm going to be visiting the toilet quite a bit. <laughs> Mars bars. This nation brought the world television, the steam engine. I've had Mars bars, whiskey, they're fire. Penicillin, and of course... I'm allergic. A deep fried Mars bar. You find many unusual foods on a British chip shop menu, from curry sauce to mushy peas, but surely none is stranger than a deep fried Mars bar. These calorie-laden snacks are made by dipping a chilled Mars bar into the batter normally used for frying fish. Hey, we're Americans. You're speaking we our language. Yeah, deep, deep frying anything? Yeah, yeah. A Twinkies, Mars bar? Twinkie. Oreos? Or fried Oreos? 10 out of 10. You, that doesn't even compare. Funnel cakes? Ugh. Mmm. Mm. We just ate, too. <laughs> we just got done eating. <laughs> because chocolate isn't fattening enough on its own, right? The snack was apparently it's invented not. as a novelty item in the Haven Chip Bar in Scotland before well, we might have to try this one. What will people think of frying next? I have a P.O. box for my main channel. Somebody send us Mars bars so that we can deep fry them. Send them to this address right here, and we'll do it. And we'll make it. We'll do it. I'll open them on my my main channel, but we'll make that video and try them on this channel. So yeah, somebody send us. Don't not everybody said we're gonna have like six thousand Mars bars now. Just Honestly, do. Yeah. <laughs> just do. Just do. Oh no, wait. They've already done that. In Glasgow, perhaps the least healthy food ever sold is the deep fried pork sausage kebab. Number eight, black pudding. What? It might have pudding in the name, but most people will be disappointed if they got served this for dessert. This sausage is typically made from a mixture of congealed pig's blood, lard, and oatmeal, and is usually eaten fried on toast or as part of a full English breakfast. So there's black pudding in it. Oh my God. Wait a minute. They did what? What is it? Hang on. A crime? Go back. <laughs> what is it in this It's typically thing? made from a mixture of congealed pig's blood, lard, and oatmeal, and is usually... Oatmeal? <laughs> Why the oatmeal? <laughs> Why oatmeal? <laughs> I don't even like Pig, oatmeal. Pig's blood, lard, 
and, and oatmeal. oatmeal. Who discovered that? Who did this? Who said, damn, I'm hungry. What we got in the cabinet, hun? Pig's blood. Uh, pig's blood, a um, little bit of lard, and about half a cup of uh, oatmeal. And said, just, just throw them all together. Let's try it out. Who, who? Who said that? <laughs> Eat some fried hey, we can't knock it till we try it. I I'm not know. trying it though. <laughs> Toast or as part of a full English breakfast. It says black pudding is in it. Black pudding is not good to us. Lemon cheesecake, it is not. Black pudding is most likely to have originated from times of hardship. When Wait, um, isn't black pudding, I'm pretty sure it's outlawed in America. Probably. I think so. Somebody let me know. I thought, I thought I've seen that before. Because something, maybe like the pig's blood or something, we're not allowed to digest or ingest or something uh it should be that's like the only thing that they've like made yeah for a while but like, y'all let me know maybe i'm thinking about something else but i feel like it's like we can't even get it in america or I'm something right would that. use every okay last part of an animal for food and whilst it might not be to everyone's taste it was acclaimed as a superfood in 2016. Number seven, yeah, mince it does, pies. It does make Originally, sense. Originally, these short crust pastry pies were made with real mincemeat, yeah. but nowadays the filling is a mixture Ooh. of dry fruit, peel, and the type of animal fat called suet. Eaten at Christmas, the pies are commonly spiced with isn't, cinnamon, cloves, and. Isn't that in birdseed? Huh. Suet, suet. He called it suet. Oh. Don't, don't they have that in birdseed? Like, isn't that what they make the blocks of birdseed with? I don't know, <laughs> old farmer. <laughs> That's how you know she worked at tractor supply. <laughs> I don't know. No, those those don't look half bad though. I, I might... mean, I, I tried those before yeah. I tried anything else. So oh, far. I'm not a bird seed in, in, in. I'm sorry. In, infuse in, infuse. Inventor. No. Oh. Infusious. Inf enthusiast. Enthusiast. <laughs> English is tough. <laughs> and to represent the gifts presented to Jesus by the three wise men. Okay. Visitors to the UK are often put off by this dessert name, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, is it? It just means that there's more left for the rest of us. Mince pie, anyone? Number six, bubble and squeak. Bubble and squeak? <laughs> <It's pipey not. laughs> this traditionally British dish is typically made from the leftovers of the equally traditional Sunday roast. Potatoes and cabbage are its core ingredients, but other vegetables can be added, such as carrots and Brussels sprouts. The possibilities I've never had are that. pretty much endless here. The potatoes are. Have you ever had a Brussels sprout? No. Nah. Me either. I don't. I don't really. I kind of want to try them. I've seen them where people put them in the air fryer and like fry them oh. with chips. Oh. I'm thinking of asparagus, the long ones. Yeah, that's yeah. what you're thinking of. Is asparagus. No, I've never had it. I've never had asparagus either. I mean, we can try it. Okay. Mashed into the cooked cabbage, then fried in a pan and eaten hot. The name bubble and squeak is said to come from the sound the ingredients make while they are cooking in the pan. And I need and you to turn. Calm down. Why are you going crazy right now, woman? We're recording a video. Give me the toy. We took it away from her. You can have it once we're done. Dad, watch over your shoulder if I were you. <laughs> Not from the effect they have on the dinosaur stomach Sit. when they reach it. Number five, toad in the hole. Excuse Yorkie me? A humble batter made from eggs, flour, and milk or water was voted the top British regional dish in 2016. What is that? And scones and cream. Or is that scones? But toad in the hole only increases the delicious factor by adding sausages to the dish. As for the origin of its admittedly pretty left field name, some people suggest that frogs were once included in the dish, and others that the finished meal looks <laughs> a bit like toad submerged in mud. And honestly, what could be more appetizing than that? Gravy. A you? lot. No, but sausage in the hole sounds fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Number Did I hear that right? Uh, <laughs> what was know. so what it was just sausage and what else? I don't, I don't even think they explained what's all in it. Y'all let us know what's in it. Like, I mean the the name's kinda weird. I feel like they could come up with something. A little better. But. I don't feel like I want to know what's in it. Um, <laughs> it didn't look terrible. It's just sausage. I mean, I don't really like sausage, so I'd rather have bacon. What? Why are you <laughs> <like that? laughs> All right. <laughs> Four steak and kidney pie. Steak don't. in a pie sounds great. The kidneys, though, take a bit more explaining. Of course, offal is hardly unique to Britain. When you consider, though, that the function of an animal's kidney is to produce urine, it makes it particularly hard to see why anyone would spoil a steak pie by adding them into it. 
In Victorian times, oysters were used instead to bulk out the pie, but when shellfish prices rose, kidneys took their place. And surprisingly, the pies are still hugely popular in Britain, not least on football stadium terraces. Steak and kidney pie. Steak and kidney pie. Number three, spotted dick. Britain has more than what a is going on? Desserts. <laughs> what is happening? Do not jump. You want you want you want a main course of spotted dick with a side of toad in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> These names are kind of kind of kind of crazy, but <laughs> but don't knock it till you try it. We all got let's find out what a spotted dick is. <laughs> With like bread raisins. and butter pudding providing a particularly perfect example. Oh, is that? Raises eyebrows quite like the sweet suet pudding known as spotted dick. The spotted part of the name comes from the dried fruits added to the dish, but the dick part is more of a mystery, and it is hard to think of a more off-putting name for an after-dinner treat. I don't know. Owing to this <laughs> in 2018, the dessert was reportedly renamed Spotted Richard in the Houses of Commons ah. restaurant to spare diners' blushes. Okay. That looks nothing like my spotted dick. Uh, right. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> on live television uh, oh my gosh i didn't like that i did i had <laughs> the oh food didn't God. look terrible though just i think i would try that i think that what's throwing me off so bad is that it looked like it had gravy on the top of it no that's just like icing or no i know that but yeah. like it looks like gravy to me which is why i was like that's well gross. to them that's not gravy at i all. know gravy to them is brown gravy let me tell you you're thinking white gravy. biscuits and gravy that's something Slaps. they they don't do over there. <laughs> that's a crime. Yeah, that's there. There's a whole video I've seen. It was on TikTok. It was of British high schoolers trying biscuits and gravy for the first time. It They're is missing pretty, out. It is pretty good. They're missing out. Yeah. I love biscuits and gravy. Who haggis? The natural dish of this. Scotland, this savoury pudding is made from the minced heart, liver, and lungs of a sheep, together with oatmeal and suet. It used to be boiled in the sheep's heard own stomach, but nowadays it is usually cooked in an artificial casing instead. Wait, they used to cook it in the stomach? I've heard enough. Bro. I don't want to know what the first one is. <laughs> what? It may look like something created for a dare, yet fans of the dish compare its taste to peppery meatloaf. Americans, in particular, seem confused by this food, with a 2003 survey suggesting a third of Scotland's US visitors thought haggis was a kind of animal. No, no, go easy on the wee one. His father's gonna go crazy and chop them all into haggis. What's haggis? <gasps> Boy, you read my thoughts. Number one, beans on toast. This classic dish the is classic. arguably the nation's favorite, with Brits getting through a staggering two million tins of beans every single day. Damn! Baked beans are also often eaten as part of a fry-up or on jacket potatoes, but in the hearts of the great British public, mm, nothing beats potatoes. simply adding them to toast. Or, if you're feeling particularly adventurous, you could always grate a little cheese on top. Considering the meal's simplicity, it's fair to say that most non-Brits struggle to understand the reason for its immeasurable popularity. Like, I get that, but, like, at the same time, growing up, when we, like, eat dinner, if whatever we're having, we'd eat a piece of bread with it. Just to kind of fill up. So, like, it might seem weird to some people, but just, like, putting it on bread, like, whenever we had, like, pasta, we'd put the pasta on the bread and, like, make, like, a sandwich out of it just to, so you, the bread will fill you up more so like, it's not that weird to me honestly it's weird to me because i never did that yeah yeah i do they're kind of confusing i'm confused <laughs> i'm genuinely confused number two almost made me throw up um <laughs> what haggis yeah Twenty thousand likes and we'll try it <laughs> okay i'm kidding what, which one should we try did y'all see the terror in my uh, we're, we're definitely gonna try the fried deep fried mars bar oh for sure but like what? We still need to try beans on toast. Beans on toast? We've never tried that. 5K likes. 5K likes. If we get 5K likes on this channel, we'll do it. And I don't like beans, like, at all, so. I do. Yeah. Y'all let us know. Y'all let me know down in the comments, how do we make beans on toast? Which beans should we use? Is there a special kind? P.O. Box is open. Maybe send us a can. Just not everybody. Listen, we're going to have... One can. We're going to have... 3,000 cans of beans and 2,000 freaking Mars bars. <laughs> We're set for life. <laughs> what, what else can you need? Yeah, drop a like on this video if you want to see us try beans on toast and anything else. Get 5,000 likes, we'll do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure I go. Oh, that's my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's JT. And Anna. And Charles. Anna. And Marge. And a sleepy Maggie. Okay, here. Thank you. <laughs> you happy now? Charlie is. Okay.
Here we You're go. about to lose it. <sighs> yep, just like that. Gone. Thank you.